In this video, we're going to be discussing the proper way to warm up your diesel engine to reduce engine damage and warm it up quickly. Hey guys, Josh for the Adept Ape channel, and in this video we're going to be discussing how long you should let your diesel engine warm up before driving off, especially in the cold winter months. And you might be wondering, hey, didn't you just make an idling video like a month ago? Well, yes, but that was talking about extended idling and the wear on your engine from extended idling. It wasn't really focused on when the engine's cold and when it's warming up. So in this video, I want to focus on those first few minutes. It is right after it started. How long should you let it idle? Should you raise the RPM? Should you take off right away? And let's get into the video. And before I jump into the subject matter at hand, I'm going to have a little clip at the end of this video that I'm going to be trying to include in more of the videos. It's something I've been thinking about for a while. Please check it out and see if you like it. If you do, let me know in the comments below. So, how long should you let your diesel engine idle or warm up after it starts, especially in the cold? Well, I don't want this video to be dogmatic because there is no definitive 38 seconds and then you accelerate away at full throttle there's a lot of subjectivity to this matter and we're going to kind of delve into the different subjects at hand and what a cold running engine does to the engine itself and to individual components so the first thing i'd say is you never want to start a particularly cold diesel engine and accelerate away right away you want to let your cylinder temperatures and your oil temperatures to climb a little bit. Now this is temperature dependent as well. If you're in Arizona and it's 100 degrees outside, pretty much once you get oil pressure, you're pretty much safe to drive away. Now if you're in North Dakota or Russia or something and it's you know minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna wanna let it warm up a little bit. Now what do I mean by a little bit? I would probably say at least a minute before you increase the RPMs because what this is doing is doing a few things. If you've ever had a jug of oil when it's, let's say, below 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside, the oil is almost a gel. It's extremely thick. So when you fire up, even if it says oil pressure on the oil pressure gauge on the dash, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the parts are lubricated properly yet because typically the oil pressure sensor is in the main oil galley. So your cam bearings, your cam lobes, your rocker arms, all of these items might not have oil to them yet. Also, the oil is gonna be extremely thick. And oil will warm up, not to full operating temperature, but it'll warm up somewhat quickly just due to the friction as aspect of it being pumped through your galley, your crankshaft, all of the different orifices in the engine. Also, it's getting sprayed through the cooling jet onto the cylinder and the piston pack. So that will help warm it up a little bit. So let's theoretically say it is 10 degrees outside. You start your engine. The coolant temp is not going to climb right away because diesel engines don't put a lot of excess heat into the cooling system, especially at idle. So typically I would say wait 30 seconds to a minute and let your oil pressure and your oil feed all the moving components. At this point, you might want to, if it's particularly cold outside, rev the engine up to about 1,000 RPM. This increases cylinder pressure and it's going to increase your combustion temperatures and your exhaust temperature will will help increase the oil temperature and your coolant temperature faster now you're not going to need to idle it very long at this temperature i would say probably another minute or so and at that point you're probably going to want to start moving the vehicle now what do i mean by moving the vehicle do you want to accelerate heavily well no you do not the warm-up phase is extremely hard on your engine, and it's not really the bearings or the cam, it's not really the hard metal components that you're worried about. What you're worried about is your cylinder liners, your cylinder crosshatch, basically, and your oil. 
because extended idle in a cold engine can wash your cylinders in diesel fuel and some of that fuel is going to bypass the rings and the cylinder walls and get in your oil and that'll cause something called fuel dilution some amount of fuel dilution is inevitable in any comp compression ignition engine but you want to minimize it as much as possible also there's something called cylinder glazing and that is there's various causes for it but from what i've found most glazing is going to occur when you have excess fuel in a cylinder you have slight cylinder pressures so idle would be the smallest amount of cylinder pressure you would get and a cold cylinder wall so that would be idling in a cold condition right so yeah you have you have unburned fuel because it's a cold cylinder wall you have very little cylinder compression because you're idling and that can accumulate glazing and damage your cylinders and we're not talking it's scratching the cylinders it's just it can contribute to early wear on the cylinder walls and that's really the most expensive type of wear do not put it under full load though you want to lightly load it and what lightly loading it is doing is even though you're not putting as much load in those cylinders as you could at full full load you are increasing the cylinder pressures and you're increasing the cylinder temperatures and the cylinder temperatures are going to help your oil and your coolant get warm quicker even in colder temperatures once your coolant temperature is up to around 180 degrees you are ready to roll you can go full load you will not hurt the engine at that point like I said this is not meant to be dogmatic this is simply my recommendation on the research I've done and everyone's gonna have a slightly different opinion as to how long you should run it a lot of guys would say well maybe I don't even need to run it at a thousand rpm to heat up the cylinders maybe I should just let it run at idle for a minute and then take off you're probably not gonna hurt the engine that way it's really you need to reduce the amount of time that it takes to increase the coolant and oil temperature up to normal operating range because most engine wear occurs below your normal operating range so what are some other ways you can help speed up this process well there's various ways there's oil heaters some of them go in your oil pan there's also block heaters block heaters are very common in the diesel field if you're in a very cold environment and you don't own a block heater you might want to look into getting one of these most of them are 110 voltage in the u.s at least and it's simply a plug that'll plug into the wall it will keep your coolant temperature up it's not going to keep it at you know 200 degrees it might keep it at let's say 80 degrees if it's 20 degrees outside but it, it will really help reduce wear and let your engine get up to operating temperature quicker now you might be wondering okay we're well, from in a very cold environment is it okay to idle it for extended periods after it's warmed up will that hurt the engine it can you don't want to idle even in a very cold environment at low idle for very long because you're basically going to run into the same situation where you have light cylinder pressures and you can get fuel wash past your cylinders so cat's recommendation is if you are going to idle it for extended periods which i understand if you're in a truck and it's five degrees outside you don't really want to shut it off for several hours and then let's see if it restarts in the morning and then you're gonna have this whole process over again cat's recommendation is to rev it via your cruise control or some other device up to a thousand rpms or slightly higher that's going to help keep your cylinder temperatures up it's going to keep your cylinder pressures up and help reduce cylinder wear they might be asking the question too well if you want to run it under a light load to warm it up quicker wouldn't it be better to run it under a heavy load well not really because you have to remember that your oil temperatures are still fairly low so you're going to have cold oil which is fairly thick coursing through this engine and you want that to be more free flowing before you start putting a heavy load on this engine not only that your block your cylinder head most likely is going to be cast iron and most of the parts are also going to be cast like your connecting rods other items you don't want extremely cold parts put under extremely heavy stress of a heavy load because they don't flex very much you want your temperatures up before you increase the load on the engine substantially especially with boost and that's going to put a lot of cylinder pressures and a lot of 
tension in your block and on all your parts. You really want them to be up to operating temperature because they were designed to be at operating temperature when they are fully loaded. They're not designed to be under incredibly heavy loads when they're very cold. I'm not saying that if you start one up and rev it up right away and drive off, everything's gonna just blow up. I'm just saying it's probably better in the long run if you warm it up under a light load and then put it under a heavy load once it's up to operating temperature than it would be to just put it under a heavy load initially. Now, anyone that's ever been in the generator field knows that sometimes this is inevitable. A lot of the backup generators at hospitals and various places, these are huge engines. We're talking 35, 16, sometimes bigger engines, and they will go from zero RPMs off to up and full load in a couple seconds. Is that the best thing for the engines? Well, no, but a lot of them run block heaters to help increase the temperatures in the engine also that's what they're designed for there's really no way to get around a standby generator needing to be put online at full load or close to it that's just the nature of the beast okay but we're talking trucks where you can vary the load and you can vary the rpm so we really are trying to protect your engine here and trying to get it the longest life that it can have okay uh, i'd like to hear your thoughts on this video and uh, i wanted to do the next segment so let's get into it. So I'm going to try and include this destruction of the week segment in most of my videos now in my weekly videos. And what it is, is I run into a lot of uh, really interesting parts failures and some random destruction in this line of work. And I kind of want to show you guys because I find it interesting. So this is what happens if all your bell housing bolts break off on your Allison transmission while you're going down the road. You're looking at the flex plate here. This, uh, this Allison here, most of the bell housing bolts broke or were stripped out or just fell out. And what it did is it ripped the flex plate, which is in place where you're flywheel would be if you had a manual transmission and it just basically ripped it right out of the uh right out of the engine there so looking at a major failure there i thought it was kind of interesting if you like the segment let me know and thanks for watching